Hello, I have today good news, the real explanation to all the Nibiru photos out there. I'm going to tell the truth about this so-called planet. This planet is a mythological legend from the Sumerian times. Nibiru is a name in Babylonian astrology sometimes associated with the god Marduk. Nibiru appears as a minor character in the Babylonian creation poem Enuma Elish as recorded in the library of Assurbanipal, king of Assyria 668-627 BCE. Summer flourished much earlier, from about the 23rd century to the 17th century BCE. The claims that Nibiru is a planet, and was known to the Sumerians are contradicted by scholars who unlike Sicharia Sitchin study, and translate the written records of ancient Mesopotamia. Summer was indeed a great civilization, important for the development of agriculture, water management, urban life, and especially writing. However, they left very few records dealing with astronomy. Certainly they did not know about the existence of Uranus, Neptune, or Pluto. They also had no understanding that the planets orbited the Sun, an idea that first developed in ancient Greece two millennia after the end of summer. Claims that Sumerians had a sophisticated astronomy, or that they even had a god named Nibiru, are the product of Sitchin's imagination. The Nibiru explanations on the recent photos are sundog. A sundog or sundog scientific name parhelion, plural parhelia, for beside the sun. Also called a mock sunday is a particular type of ice halo. It is a colored patch of light to the left or right of the sun, 22 or more degrees distant, and at the same distance above the horizon as the sun. It is the most commonly, or second most commonly seen of the ice halos. Sundogs can be seen anywhere in the world during any season. In Europe or USA they might be seen one to two times a week, but not always obviously bright. They are best seen, and at their most conspicuous, when the sun is low. They are not rainbows. Sundogs are formed by plate-shaped hexagonal ice crystals in high and cold cirrus clouds, or, during very cold weather, by ice crystals called diamond dust drifting in the air at low level. Sundog forming rays enter a near vertical prism side face of a crystal and exit through a second side, face inclined 60 degrees to the first. There is net refraction at each face and the light is dispersed into colors. There is no single angle of deviation through the crystal, which effectively acts as a 60-degree prism, but the minimum angle of deviation is 22 degrees. This corresponds to the distance of the inner edge of the sundog from the sun, when the sun is low. As the sun rises higher the rays passing through the crystals are increasingly skewed from the horizontal plane. Their angle of deviation increases, and the sundogs move further from the sun. However, they always stay at the same altitude as the sun. Sundogs are red-colored at the side nearest the sun. Farther out the colors grade through orange to blue. However, the colors overlap considerably and so are muted, never pure or saturated. The colors of the sundog finally merge into the white of the parhelic circle, if the latter is visible. It is possible to theoretically predict the forms of sundogs as would be seen on other planets and moons. Mars might have sundogs formed by both water ice and CO2 ice. On the giant gas planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune other crystals form the clouds of ammonia, methane and other substances that can produce halos with four or more sundogs. This educational video was brought to you by Fock Tech Edition.